Hey guys, what's going on? Some guy from Moto Drang here. If you're new to the channel, well, I'm just some guy who reviews bikes. Uh, I'm looking at it like a consumer and uh, I'll ride the bike, I'll tell you what I think. I'm not a mechanic, I'm not an engineer, and I'm not a journalist. So this is just my opinion of how the bike is and would I buy it or not. So with that, welcome aboard. Let's uh, get ready. I'll fix my hair and uh, let's get to the dealer. Sweet, finally we are here. Okay, here we have it, the Rocket 3. You know, I'm a little late to the game. There's certainly other people that have uh, been reviewing this. So the only hope that I have here is that I can, you know, give you some perspective. I really have no, I don't have, my, my opinion of this bike, we'll get to that. Um, overall, I think I'm gonna like it, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. The basics, 2500cc, it's shaft driven, six gears, nice Brembo brakes, uh, you know, um, I, I covered the technical specs in the beginning part of the video. I'm more interested to see just how this uh, bad boy rides, so, you know, firstly, let's, let's just take a seat on her. And uh, it's got that key fob thing. Okay, so let's just tap it we got the key in our hand so yeah okay there's the light coming on that's good looks good to me and let's put our gloves on I'll put this key fob in the pocket by the way thanks as usual to Cascade Moto Classics here in Beaverton um, they've been working with me for quite some time now I mean it's uh, it's amazing you know I, I just offer this service kind of for free review any bike really I don't it doesn't have to be a triumph but a lot of people don't take you up on it so if you guys are thinking about getting into the moto vlog scene the review scene you know if you're it's it, it can be a really slow grind and it's still a slow grind for me i only think i have 1500 subs okay let's start this bike up we're in neutral uh it has riding modes it has uh, all the new stuff all the imu stuff so really it feels light you know like i have no hands on it but it it, it does feel like a, a very manageable bike oh my god <laughs> when it starts it actually jumps I mean it's oh man that is that's great we're gonna go gentle first ladies and gents well guys I'm back again and I have a different GoPro because hey if you guys start shooting videos on GoPros you're gonna have these kind of things go wrong and it, the best part is that you have to wait till you get all the way home to actually figure out just what the heck was going on so that's okay any excuse to ride one of these bikes again uh, is okay with me uh, one little tip I want to give you guys if you're buying a new Triumph and it comes with this key fob it's pretty fancy a little too fancy for me the trick is the button is the Triumph logo and you gotta, you gotta press that for like three seconds before it kicks on. If you tap it, the green light comes on, but that doesn't mean it's on. So that's like a battery check. Uh, we're gonna hold it and then it turns red and then... Well shit, you have to actually uh, turn the ignition on. Uh, Moto Drang, that would be helpful. <laughs> okay, let's, let's get this thing started. There we go. And she's on. Okay, so before the sound wore off uh, or cut out on the last video, I was saying that uh, this bike does is really, really easily maneuverable at uh, low speeds or in a parking lot or something like that. 
Let's go get them to put a little gasoline in it. Be careful around all these excellent bikes. Yeah, this is a good test of that slow speed maneuvering, I guess. We're back in the saddle. We have a little bit more gas, which is good. When this thing starts up, man, it, it means business, guys. So, you know, again, the, um, this seems like non-content that I'm showing right now, but uh, actually it's to sort of illustrate, like this bike's really easy to ride. Uh, compared to even my Tiger 1200 or maybe even a Tiger 800, Tiger 800 is pretty easy to ride, but um, this thing, despite its gigantic engine, which is clearly the focus of this thing, is uh, well balanced and doesn't have nearly as much cross-plane torque, or I'm probably using the wrong word for that, but it doesn't really jolt out of your hands too much. That said, when you start the bike, you feel it. I mean, the, 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 the camshaft rotating, actually you feel it in the bike's uh, handlebars. So it's a, it is a lot of engine. All right, we start our review in town. And as you can probably tell, it's a fairly smooth and simple bike. It's pretty relaxed and the handling is nice and um, it's, it's pretty snappy. Now in the last video I mentioned that like with all bikes you, you, you have to ride them for a while to get a feel and I'm sort of doing a test ride review. Understandable. Um, so I'm not going to be pushing this bike to the limits. Uh, this, is a, this is a dealer bike and I don't want to destroy it. And those guys that go out and really romp on them, if you watch the big moto journalists, um, those guys wreck bikes. Uh, <laughs> That's the little secret is that sometimes the manufacturers get pretty upset with them, certain riders. And, and, and I like what they do, their content's really great and they are able to really explore these bikes at a further degree. I'm going to tell you how it is for just a regular owner, someone who doesn't want to drop this bike and wants to enjoy it, but also have a little fun. So that's the aim of this review. We'll give you the good, we'll give you the bad. So good. Uh, ergos are, are, are really neutral. It's not, even though this is the R model, which is sportier than the GT, at least in stature, it's pretty neutral. And I wouldn't call this a sport bike at all. Uh, I, this is, it, it's sporty. It's sporty in the way that a, a Dodge Challenger is not really like a Corvette or something um, and that's what this to me is it's sort of like the Dodge Hellcat Challenger of, uh, of motorcycles it's a really great fast straight line bike and um, also pretty good to just cruise around town on even as a daily commuter it could be done um, my biggest probably gripe is that at higher speeds just in case you can't hear my voice so well at higher speeds the way you sit on the R model sort of has you cupping the wind and it's it, it you know you can tilt forward like that but for me it's it's actually a fairly compact setup and and, and doesn't feel sporty to me so it's more comfortable for me to be upright the wind's gonna hit you. The funniest thing about this bike has got to be the horn. It's just, yeah, people are looking at me, but um, it's so funny. It's this puny little horn on this big uh, honking 2500cc motor. <laughs> it's like a scooter horn. <laughs> but hey, that's the, that's the classic Triumph horn though, so I'm not gonna hold that against them. Now, classically, Triumph gets hit on sort of fit and finish kind of things. And they've made an effort with this bike above and beyond, say, the Scrambler. Uh, I reviewed that bike and one of my criticisms was that the gauge has like, it's just visible wires and stuff going to it. I, I just, for, for to me, a Triumph is sort of like 
getting towards premium brand and I don't know um, this one they covered it they put a shroud around it and it, it really helps um, I have to imagine now I'm not riding this at night I'm just borrowing this for a little bit the headlights are probably gonna be fantastic I only say that because check out my bobber black review because it had one of these headlights it was amazing it was probably the best headlight I've ever used on a bike it's not hyperbolic um, believe me we'll get to the bats on this machine but uh, in this case I have to imagine the headlights are fairly sufficient the danger of course being that this engine is capable of far outriding any headlight <laughs> so you know at night you shouldn't be going too fast and be careful riding at night anyways because that's when all the drunks and weirdos go out now this bike has the rider modes it has traction control it has ABS it's got all the basics I'm not getting into this technical specifications of all that however the amount of power on this engine it, it, it is possible to break traction even with traction control on so I wouldn't call this a beginner bike and although a beginner could ride it it's not difficult necessarily uh, this is it's something that you, you definitely want to have good clutch discipline throttle discipline and you don't want to be the kind of person who uh, panics in a pinch and grabs and rips a, rips a hold of some throttle because that you know I love the sound it's just such a cool a big triple it, it's got a really fascinating sound I mean I'd love to see this on the on a tiger <laughs> it'd be a lot of engine on an adventure bike but I think it'd be pretty wicked what you're getting with this bike overall is probably one of the most unique motorcycles that's made period there's really no other company that uh, has an engine like this or is big even Harley came out with a 131 I believe recently and I gotta admit that's impressive but I think that equates to something like a little over 2,000 cc's this is 2500 and this is Euro 5 so if you really as an American my thought is all right let's delete that bull crap and see what this bad boy can really do uh, I have to imagine they have restricted this engine quite a bit because on the original rocket as I understand you had to really liberate a lot of that engines power it was hidden behind poor air intakes and things that were designed as safety and emission control and I bet you the same is true for this bike There's another Triumph boy. Don't worry, we're gonna get on this throttle, but let's cover the rest. Seating position, it's really nice. It cups you very well. Uh, when you accelerate, it holds on to you, which you're gonna want, because uh, like my Hayabusa, uh, you, you would slide right off the back of that. But on this, it cups you real nice, and uh, no matter what's going on, you don't slide. It's a little hard, and after about a half an hour my butt starts getting sore uh, the reason I tell you that is I have a bony butt and I have arthritis so I'm I'm, I'm a baby and I'm I, I'm a complainer I guess but I'm just telling you that because hey you're dropping 20 grand on one of these or a little less or, or you know it aroundabouts they're not a cheap bike so you, you you'll want to know every attribute seats classically are uncomfortable on just about every bike they're designed for looks primarily to sell the bike it's designed to be comfortable when you sit on it in the showroom and that's any bike guys it's not anyone in particular so you can go and, and see if someone uh, we have in Oregon we have a guy down in south southern south of us or central Oregon who is like a master of uh, reshaping seats and contouring so if it was my bike I'd probably go straight to him and have him contour it to my bum so now there's two uh, there's another option of this bike there's the GT the GT has the sweat back bars it comes with the laughable pillion backrest and I say laughable because as powerful as this bike is your significant uh, friend on the back is sure to fly off the back of it if you really got on it it only goes up like this high so it's just kind of funny to me uh, there's no way my wife would, would she would demand a, a replacement immediately 
Uh, that said, you're, you get the four foot pegs and you get the sweat back bars, so it's a more relaxed riding position. And I have to say, guys, that's the one I would choose for myself because of my arthritis and because I just like cruising. Um, I don't want to go to jail, so uh, <laughs> this bike can, believe it or not, it could probably send you to jail. Now there are some accessories, that, but it's pretty limited right now. It's a very new bike. So um, I, I think in the future, the third party market is gonna come out with some really cool accessories, um, better luggage options, um, who knows, but. Now what this bike does get you at this sort of base entry, excuse me, let's call this the base entry. You get, you get cruise control. I think that's pretty cool as a standard feature. Uh, I use it all the time, basically. Even in town, it helps me not to speed. <laughs> so, uh, it does have cruise control, you just hit it, and and so I've turned it on, and let's set it. So I'm set right now, cruise control. You tap it once to turn it on. And the brakes, let's check these brakes, watch this. We're gonna do kind of a quick stop here. Oh yeah, it's very, very snappy. Big brakes on this bike. Again, I'm not going to bore you with all the details. They work. They work pretty good. Traction control works, but this bike overcomes it. It's so powerful. So you need to know that this is not a bike I would ride on a rainy day personally, but I do ride every day on my Tiger. So it's not that I avoid the rain. I am six foot three, let's say, maybe six foot two. I'm probably shrinking. And it's not too severe of a bend in my knees. Um, however, if I was a shorter rider, I think this bike would be totally acceptable. Um, so that's, you know, I hope that answers all the comfort questions. Um, we've got a button here that allows us menu access. Ah, we have our first turn coming, so let's talk about it. How's this thing handle? Now that we're not going fast, it just lays in real nice. Just lay the hips down and the bike will keep a nice line. It's, it's fairly predictable. Feels good. Um, it has, to me, similarity to the way that a street twin handles. Of course, a little heavier, a little more lethargic. But you've got these big wide bars and it gives you like really good leverage. So. That's good. And I'll just give you guys a roll on so you can just kind of see. She'll move. And I've got it on regular mode, road mode, I think. Let's check. Uh, modes, mode button is right there. Yeah, we were in regular, now we're in sport. We will leave it in sport for the rest of this, right? So I hope you guys like wind in your hair because you're gonna get a lot of it on this bike. There's zero wind protection. This thing up here like does nothing. Maybe it's doing something, but I can't detect it. Uh, we're gonna do a roll on from stop up here. Um, okay. So you guys can kind of see. Okay, I was being really conservative and I hope that you can appreciate that. I mean, my throttle hand was basically, let me put the, uh, whoops, let me put the cruise control on. Okay, my hand did this. It, it was a, it was a, you know, the bike, I, I probably would have lost control because I don't have enough time in the saddle to ride it like that. So it's very fast and very fun and it's very forgiving because you get an insane amount of torque even at 2000 rpm so much that if you short shift you can lose traction as it jumps on you so it does take some time getting used to this bike but overall it does everything pretty smoothly and, and predictable this turn for example i'm just watching my line 
beautiful. You can get a lot more out of this bike. It's got big tires, but it handles pretty good. Um, as far as looks go, it's there's nothing. It's I mean, there's similar looks. You could say the Diavel. You could say I've seen another really good uh, vlogger talk about the V Max. Guys, the V Max is a totally different uh, bike, and it's probably faster than this bike. If I'm being honest, the V Max is insane. Um, but this bike is out of the gate. It's silly, silly, powerful, and. You know, you go and do some throttle mapping and, and some exhaust changing and some air intake change, some smog blocks. Yeah, smog blocks, I said it, Europe. And, uh, sorry, no, I love my European brothers. I get a lot of awesome comments from uh, the UK and um, I always love it. I mean, I, I love that I'm having conversations with you guys. So please, you know, hit me up. I, I wake up in the morning and I first thing I do is I check that YouTube uh, message board because it's just like I feel like we're having this. I'm meeting people and that's really cool. I don't do this channel for money. Uh, and I fully demonetize it. I don't want you guys to have to watch commercials. And I, I hate advertisements, so why would I do that to you? I, I, I started this channel to sort of get away from that. I, I also want to be able to say what I think. Let, let's, and with that, let's cover some of the negatives on this bike. This is a good transition, I think. I'm going to slow down cruising speed so you can hear me. Negatives. Well, for, for a bike that's basically a zip-bop around town machine, that's not really a touring bike. Uh, it's, it's, it's expensive for me. Maybe used, I could afford one of these. Personally, it's not in my budget. Um, next up, I think in my mind, this bike has a lot of wasted potential. And maybe they have future plans for this engine, but with the capability of it, I personally would like to see this on a touring bike, like a professional tourer. Thank you. Americans classically don't know how to use roundabouts, so that's why I was going really slow. I don't want to get creamed. Um, but not you Americans watching my video. You guys get it. <laughs> um, I think this bike to me has a lot of wasted potential. Uh, it, it could be, this could be a bike to compare, like if they had set it up in a touring setup, or at least offer this engine, plat this platform in a, in a touring setup. With all the luxury, the stereo, the GPS, everything, it could really compete against the Indian Challenger, the Harley Davidson road glides, all that stuff. Woo! You know, but instead it's just a roadster and it's cool. And if you pull up to a bar, you go to the coffee shop, it's gonna, you're gonna have a conversation with someone about this bike. It's, it demands attention. It's cool like that. But in my mind, I wanna see a big dresser with this engine and a big suspension for you, your passenger, and a lot of luggage. This engine could tow a boat for fuck's sake. And, um, Instead, it's sort of Euro 5 restricted, and it's a, it's, you know, it, it's it's cool in an excessive way. And if I had the money, sure, I'd probably buy one of these. But I'd probably buy the GT at least. But so, I guess that's my only gripe is that I would like to see Triumph have a competent touring bike, and this is the perfect engine for it. And I was really hoping the GT would be. A little more tour friendly but it's not much more tour worthy than this um, it is more comfortable I believe probably different handling characteristics but um, come on triumph listen to the consumer like I, sh I shouldn't say that touring bikes aren't very popular now and maybe that's why they didn't want to do it is because they're appealing to this younger weekend warrior crowd we don't have like a lot of leave time to go and take month-long trips across the country oh yeah 
one other additional note um, the mirrors on this bike are some of the best I've used uh, especially on any Triumph the positioning and the size is really nice almost no elbow visible it's almost everything behind me so I have to give them big time kudos on that differences between rider and sport mode that I noted when I was out there um, yeah I guess <laughs> I have quicker quicker to rev maybe in the sport that's what it kind of felt like they're both stupid fast I you know you could ride it in any in, in any mode I guess um, fast enough for this guy right here to nab me up so yeah um, I'm sure rain mode might be a little more noticeable I didn't get into that if there is in fact a rain mode let's see yeah there is there's rain rider which is custom you can set up your own if you want to really want to do some rear sl some tail slides then you can set that up in the rider it's really impressive the torque band on it is so linear so linear overall it's just an amazing machine and you do get quite a bit for your standard sort of motorcycle um, now who is this bike for I think for the muscle car guys gals um, and, any, and I think for that cr community this is a great bike for the tuners for the people who want to put superchargers on things and drag race this would be the uh, an awesome bike to really delve into from a techie from a mechanical standpoint let's pull in here I'll give you my final thoughts on the bike I'm at Cruiser's dine-in place I come here a lot they got good burgers good milkshakes and they get all their stuff from like local farmers kind of cool I know you Oregon bros that watch my channel which I greatly appreciate I know you know the areas I ride and that's real cool I love seeing those comments that you guys ride here also uh, okay if I'm smart enough to turn this thing off okay some closing thoughts um, I'll cut video here we'll go to the office after this and uh, and give just a final wrap up just some closing thoughts on riding the bike far far more diminutive than you think it's gonna be when you see it in person and when you sit on it and uh, wiggle it around between your legs it's that sounds bad ignore that it, it, it really is easily manageable uh, I could be a much smaller person in front and stature um, and have no problem I'm not a particularly strong per I'm kind of lanky and skinny except for my beer gut but I have no problems with this bike it feels very accessible later I'll show you my high boost and I'll show you a bike that is not accessible so it's not nearly as scary as you think it's gonna be um, sound is great right out of the factory which is nice I only imagine if you change the muffler it would just gosh I, this thing could be a real beast um, big tires don't handle don't affect the handling too too badly and they look great I think um, I suspect people will want to take that uh, rear guard off but I bet you you'll end up with a nice dirty jacket when you do that so probably keep that on or at least maybe go with a more chic model if you're into really stylizing these things and I think it's real tasteful uh, one of the other criticisms I will give it uh, as far as just really being nitpicky there's a lot of metal um, accents on the bike you can see them all over some of them are fake most of them are real let's see if this is real that might be plastic um, I'm okay with the plastic that's fine but we have multiple metal parts and I understand the heat guards looking different than the pipes but if you if you start to look at it um, certain things on the bike have ever so slightly different um, brushings and finish up here this is different than the brush metal everywhere else I'm being really nitpicky here it's a style bike so just bear with me um, uh, and a lot of these things you you know Triumph ends up selling beauty products that you can replace things with um, 
I like that it tells you it's a rocket on the side. I like the look of the new engine. It's not as bloated looking of a bike. Personally, I like the old rockets, but a lot of people said they're just too bulbous. And other than the tank being big, everyone's told me, oh, the tank looks huge. It's got to be. This thing gets bad gas mileage. So um, I, I, I'll put the number in, but I think it's in the 20s. And with me riding it the way I do, I'm probably in the teens. It's a big engine, though. You, you, what do you expect? So this is not an eco bike. This is this is excess. And if you have the freedom to purchase excess and you like that, this is the bike for you. And it's like a statement. It, uh, it's just one of those cool bikes. You know, this is this reminds me of the late 90s, early 2000s Japanese speed wars, but we've taken it from a different angle. So, all right, let's cut over to the office and uh, I'll finish this up. Well, we're back in the office, and as you can see, the motorcycle itself just blew my hair right off. So, uh, with that, let's wrap up this very long video, although I think worth it, because this bike is certainly worth the time we spent uh, talking about it. Um, just so you guys know, if you have any questions on the bike, I'm happy to answer that. So, uh, please ask away. If I don't know it, I'll get to the dealer, and I'll get you that answer. On this bike, overall... I'm very impressed, but I want to start with the cons. Con number one, got to be the wind. The wind, uh, I mean, uh, this is a fast bike. It's a lot of engine. And um, for me, I would definitely put that little windscreen accessory on there. I think that would do quite a bit to at least get the wind over your shoulders. I'm a wimp. I get that. Con number two to me, uh, it's an expensive bike, at least for me. For As a new bike, it's just not something that uh, at least... For my salary range, it's not in the budget. Um, I think maybe a used one of these will come up pretty reasonable, but uh, for me, the GTs coming in are around 20 to 22, I believe, um, and that's just not really in the budget. Con number three, and this is the big one, touring capability. I really wanted to see the GT um, try at least try to compete with um, you know, forget the baggers from Harley and Indian. How about competing with the Trophy, even? I think the Trophy probably had a, a better touring setup, if you ask me. I'd really like to see Triumph do something with this bike and with this engine, or maybe as a separate platform. I think it's got a lot of capability, and I see some wasted potential here. Uh, one more con is, to me, the fact that uh, currently the turn-by-turn -turn navigation, the Triumph connectivity app, only supports the TFC model as far as I understand. In my mind, um, I, I, this needs to happen soon. Um, I, I, I think I'd really like to see that we've got this high-tech display, but we're missing out on those features that make it feel like a high-tech display. And if we're being honest, that screen is much smaller than some of the competition. KTM screens are getting bigger and more clear and more vivid. So I think hey, Triumph, you're going to have to really push it forward. When you start getting into the technology thing, uh, everything moves quick. So try to keep up the pace. But let's go to the pros because this bike has a lot of them. Uh, the biggest pro is that engine. It's incredible. Uh, even if you're not looking to buy one of these, if you have the chance to sit on one, to ride one, please do it. It's really something. Um, it's like if you've never driven a V8 engine and you get in and experience that for the first time in your life. It's it's different and it uh, um, it kind of brings chills to you a little bit. The rumble and the sound. The sound doesn't come through in my GoPro very good, but uh, believe me, in person, this thing sounds mean. Number two on this list, I'm going to call it maintenance um, because it's the it's the drive train that it is, which is the shaft drive, um, the, the shaft comes in on the side of the bike, um, the maintenance cycles are, are really good. It's just like a Tiger 1200 essentially. And that is about every 10,000 miles you have a service, 20,000 is a more serious service interval. But I found it to be pretty affordable and pretty predictable. So it's, it's fairly easy to maintain. And on top of that, the price of maintaining this bike is pretty good. The dealers at least around me, are comparable to what's on the low end in town. Um, it was more expensive for me to get work done on my Japanese bikes. It's certainly more expensive at a Harley dealership, I would I would guarantee it. So it's a pretty standard rate in the shop. 
Um, parts can be pricey because sometimes those have to come from England. So, um, you know, when you're getting into these European bikes, not everything is cheap and friendly. So you need to know that going in. But overall, I think it's pretty good. Next up online, the looks. <laughs> this bike looks incredible. It demands, it commands attention. It, uh, people were looking out of their windows at the bike as I rode this the two times I rode it. I'm really glad I rode it two times because it gave me a better perspective the second time. Uh, to, it, it, I was much more, the second time on the bike, I was much more comfortable with that much power and engine. But the looks are great, and people, and motorcyclists typically know right away what it is, and they want to talk to you about it, which I think is pretty cool. Next up is the handling and weight. It's surprisingly good. It's not an R1 sport bike. It doesn't handle that sharp. It doesn't handle as sharp as a speed twin, but it's damn good, and, it, and it's surprisingly easy to ride. It holds a line very well. It doesn't feel heavy. It is kind of a heavy bike, and it's got a big fuel tank, so that's going to add a lot of weight as well. So the only way for you to really experience that is to go throw a leg over it and see what you think for yourself there. Next up, it's comfortable. The seat is really nice right out of the gate. It's a little stiff, and I have a bony butt, so I'm particularly sensitive, but it's definitely one of the best seats I've sat on in a Triumph, and it does a great job of keeping you in place and not letting the bike throw you off the back. So uh, the, uh, I think if you have a passenger on this bike, then you might have to be a little bit more careful and you might consider putting the bike in rain mode or in uh, touring mode to cut some of that power down. Uh, on the GT model, and I guess you could call this a con, the GT model has a backrest for your passenger. It's functional, but it's not great for uh, your mama bear seat. And lastly on the list, even at the low end of this bike, you come in with some pretty nice standard features, getting cruise control, and the, the, the ride modes, traction control, ABS, and all that stuff. So you get a pretty good bike right out of the gate as far as suspension brakes and some basic component level stuff. You quickly move up into the heated grips and things like that that a lot of riders like to have on a bike. So right out of the gate, you get a pretty good bike. Well, I hope that information is useful, and please let me know if it is or isn't. Let me know how I can make this channel better. With that, you guys ride safe. I'll see you next time.